Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, that's the first live, so uh, I hope it will be okay. So let's see when you, you will be on the chat. You can easily uh, post uh, the question that you have, and I will try to answer it uh, right away. Um, I see that we have two people for now from YouTube. Don't hesitate to uh, tell me where you... Okay, it's Sarah. So hello, Sarah. Um, where do you watch that? Which country do you live? And if you grow Nepantes, uh, let me know. Canivero, hi. How are you? So today we will have a kind of a presentation. So I compile all the questions that I had uh, and uh, this way it's going to be better. So we'll talk about different uh, stuff here from the beginner plans that we should. Uh, oh, I did <laughs> an error of the type. I have a typo there. Uh, we'll talk about, um, yeah, the, the fall on the windowsill. Clearly, uh, that's going to change the way your plants grow. Uh, the pest problem where I have a, a typo, but anyway, um, other plants that uh, I grow beside the Nepenthes. Uh Again, that's all the question you shoot me on uh, YouTube and Facebook, so I will answer them uh, if my plants flowered, and I will keep you updated about the uh, the seedlings, the basil, and uh, all the, the new stuff that are happening right now on the windowsill. Even if you will, um, you will uh, see them uh, on the video, but uh, usually I film the video two to five weeks ahead, uh, just because uh, having a video a week is a lot of work if you don't manage that, doing that uh, in blocks where I record a three to five video in a row. So uh, it saves me time and I can more relax. So, uh, Oh, so Sarah, you have a west uh, window seal. Um, it's still not bad. Uh, you probably have the afternoon sun, so uh, you can manage to have to add uh, grow light. But uh, you should try. There is some species that are really uh, easy. The beginner species should just accept uh, any kind of uh, window except north, obviously. Um, Hello, golden eye. And uh, afternoon, yeah. So yes, our afternoon sun is uh, is great for uh, for Nepenthes. Uh, afternoon sun would be better than morning sun. Morning sun, uh, it's the coldest sun you will have, and uh, that's not a lot. Uh, clearly, you better uh, have that on the south to to west. Um, so um, where are you watching that? I will start in a in a minute, but uh, let me know where you you come from, and uh, we will start from there. Yeah, sometimes we don't have enough window uh, for sure. Uh, I totally understand that. Uh, me, I was lucky to um, to have this big window seal, and that's almost why I started that. I thought, OK, that's going to be. Oh, Nadia, Winnipeg. <laughs> so a neighbor. Uh, so welcome, Nadia. Um, yeah, the bamboo stick. OK, so I will um, start by uh, this presentation, and uh, we will see. So. Yeah, I can do that. Cool. So for the oh USA, okay, nice color. Um, Delaware, okay, and Quebec also we have. Okay, so we we have still a lot of uh, people from North America for now, and probably the time. Um, we have California too. Very cool. Okay, welcome, guys. Uh, so beginner species. Um, 
Yeah. All the Ventricosa hybrids are great. Uh, you will have the classic Ventrata, uh, Ventricosa Alada. Uh, you will have Gaia. Gaia. Lately, I got the Gaia. Uh, and that's very a fantastic grower. Uh, it grow really strong, uh, almost like a Ventrata, but maybe I'm, I don't know, Ventrata, I had that for so many years. This new hybrid uh, like Gaia and uh, Brixiana are uh, really fancy, like not the classic red and classic shape. Uh, the fact that we have kind of a, the, the spots on the Gaia and the stripes uh, on the Brixiana, that's definitely uh, something. Hello, we have uh, Amberdy from Alabama. Um, oh, okay, Czechia. Welcome, Theo. Uh, yeah, uh, I did uh, an interview of uh, Camilla from Czechia lately. I hope you, you watch it. Uh, she has great plants. Uh, so clearly, uh, it was very interesting to, to see. It's kind of the same um, clim climate as uh, Winnipeg, really center of the continent. So absolutely no influence on the, the sea, but uh, more gray, I feel. Uh, here uh, in Manitoba, it's a lot of sun, so way colder. So it was interesting to see that. So on the presentation, uh, yeah, definitely Ventricosa descendant would be great. And I would recommend these three species. Uh, clearly, they will be the strongest one. Ventricosa, now, uh, why I'm recommending that? It's between Ventricosa live between 1,000 and 2,000 on elevation on the mountains. That means that's exactly the temperature you will have on the classic windowsill. Hello, lactation nation. Um, so Ventricosa, you have also the Maxima. Maxima, that's very, very broad. Uh, from 40 meter to 2,600 meter, that's basically they grow everywhere. That's why you won't have uh, a Maxima species. Hi, Gauthier. Hi, Sawyer. Oh, Gauthier and Sawyer. Aristo, yeah. Ventricosa, definitely. Aristo and Ventricosa would work uh, great. Again, Ventricosa, it's designed for windowsill. And uh, yeah, even uh, the Ventricosa Amada. So yeah, Ventricosa is the way to go. Then uh, Maxima is great, but again, you won't have one species. Maxima, you will have the lowland Maxima, the intermediates, almost, yeah, island. Even if they never really market that this way, I mean, if you have a plants that come from seeds that were 2,000 meters away from the sea, uh, they won't grow the same way as the one that uh, were 40 meters. So Maxima, depending of where it is, uh, it comes from, it will be different. But Maxima clearly is great for windowsill too. And you have this uh, Miranda uh, kind of... Uh, uh, Miranda, I didn't find it here yet, but it's definitely on my list. Uh, you saw it in many uh, interviews I did so far. Uh, the Miranda is great for uh, uh, windowsill. More when uh, you have warmer windowsill. For me, I don't know, because there is this Norciana, and that's clearly a lowland. I'm not sure it will enjoy winter, but for sure, for from spring to fall, it should. Uh, accept that, but uh, I guess I will have to try for that. Um, Maxima Dark, yes. Maxima Dark, definitely. Uh, the first time I, I, I see that, it was uh, with um, the interview uh, from, uh, it was North uh, California, yeah. It was Gian, and uh, yeah, definitely, it looks great. I don't see that often here in Canada, but uh, clearly if you can have your hand on it, that would be great. Miranda, uh, yeah, picture, a lot of picture for sure. For now, we are discussing the kind of a classic uh, hybrid. 
beginner species if you want to start growing on the windowsill with almost no effort uh, and uh, really forgiving plants. Again, this tree, this is the one I recommend because, uh, yeah, you can do mistake. Uh, first time Ventrata, I, uh, in France, Pete uh, is, um, damn, I lose my word, uh, it was a tourbe. So we, we have two kinds of tourbe. We have the blonde and the brown. Uh, and the blonde one is pit moss. The brown one is kind of a humus thing. And I didn't knew I put it that in this uh, dark uh, pit and it was a regular soil. And after a few months, I discovered that it was not great. I could repot it and it was okay. But uh, because Ventrata was so strong to handle my mistakes, I never killed it. Uh, but clearly poor water, tap water, poor soil, uh, to really a forgiving plant. I'm sure Gaia and Brixena, in this order, Gaia first, then Brixena, would be also forgiving the mistake uh, that can be done. That's why I recommend that. Uh, Maxima Abrae, fantastic. Yeah, and, uh, and you, Carnivaro, I know you have a great Maxima plant, like probably the, the, the size of, I cannot even put that on the screen. So clearly that's uh, almost the, a bottle of cola. So that's a huge plant. And if you have some seeds, that's going to be great for that. Uh, yeah, Lowei and Trancata definitely uh, will be good. Lowei again, it's island. Uh, Trancata kind of a, everywhere, but uh, if you have a low EI crossed with something island too, it's going to be an island. So you have to take care of what is the cross with. Uh, but clearly, if you have low EI Maxima, pff, no problem. Low EI um, North Siena, low EI Island, North, North Siena Lowland, that's going to be intermediate. That's great. So yeah, uh, check what is. A... OK, quick question, Ventricosa Hybrid. Bill Bailey, I I heard about this one. I never really saw it here, so I never really researched. So I don't know what is this hybrid. If you can tell me, it's yeah, Ventricosa, but there is probably something else. Uh, it sounds really red to me, um, almost like a, a Gaia. So I would not be surprised. Singalana. Hmm. Wow. Okay, so more on the highland. Very interesting. Uh, I will definitely try. Ventrata. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's kind of a, a blase. That's how I would say that in French. Uh, it's because it's so obvious that nobody really care about it. Um, but again, to do some tests or to challenge the, the plant, it's a great thing. Frostbite. Wow. Okay. So definitely, uh, yeah, the the good plans to go. Uh, yep. Ah, uh, that's the thing. Uh, I can find. I will just put the conversion. Hmm. I don't know if I can do that. So the conversion, um, yeah, uh, we will have some problem for this uh, uh, Celsius. Sorry for the Celsius. So um, basically, how Celsius will work, uh, even if you don't want to convert, is uh, they dump it down, actually. That's how the water reacts. Zero degree and under, water is solid, it's ice. Is the freezing point above 100 degree the water gets a gas it's the steam so really then you can see 50 degree would be um, quite hot 37 degree inside the body so you can tell uh, that but uh, yeah so uh, that's the only way i can uh, help you with this uh, celsius and fahrenheit because i'm always trying to uh, convert all the temperature we talk about on the video, but uh, I know when it's alive like that, that's going to be challenging. Um, 
Stenophila and Vichia is Stenophila. Stenophila, for me, don't like when it's cold. So maybe Vichia would help, depending if it's an island or not. But um, yeah. Okay, no spotting. So Clément is French from France. Uh, can you confirm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, even not toxic water, but Ventrata was very great to handle uh, like high TDS, like minerals crap on the... You can tell, actually. It was in peat moss, so it's acidic. Uh, I put tap water. So... Um, it do a chemical reaction on the top of this, uh, the peat moss. You have some kind of a yellowish crystals. That's uh, how I discovered back in the day that uh, the all the minerals was building up inside oops, inside this uh, substrate uh, when I decided to repot. Uh, I'm not sure to understand you, Sarah. Uh, the chat goes maybe too fast. Maybe <laughs> I'm not used to that. Because that one on the picture. Okay, I will just go back there. This one, the the spots on the Gaia. You mean? Uh, that's. I don't know if it's come from. The light or anything. It's just a. The way Gaia grew on my place, I would be interested to see if it's changing from side to side. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, so what happened to a new leaf? Well, it will be deformed and uh, I, I damaged my uh, truncata for now. I, I just, I was filming for you guys and I just, being distracted, I dropped my camera on the plant. Yeah, that, that's still good. Uh, so I broke a um, tendril and the leaf, and you have no picture. And the next leaf, and it's just great. So uh, really damaging, uh, even during the shipping, it's not really a problem. Uh, the plants will recover. Uh, give it some time. That's That's all you can do. Yeah. Definitely, Gaia is a uh, cute plant. Uh, we'll move to the next session uh, of the section. Sorry, to this. Uh, if you grow on the windowsill, what to expect uh, during fall? Well, uh, I don't know for you guys, but um, before I got the grow lights, uh, that was the moment where all the pitcher had this uh, weird uh, lid problem. It was uh, oops here. It was not opening or kind of a stuck. And the, all the picture was growing under, but it was uh, the top was blocked by the by the lid that were stuck or not expanding. So that was only the, my concern about changing uh, the the season. And uh, so that's maybe something you will experiment. Uh, maybe the the pictures will slow down. Most of them will die. Usually. They they start dying and new picture is coming right away and you you always have picture but sometime during fall and it, especially during winter um, it will be one picture will grow and totally die then a new one will come so it's uh, less activity on the plant and um, it's not the temperature for what I discovered it's not temperature it's the number of hour of light uh, so maybe uh, um, I'm right now building a video about that about the grow light and the, the way i add this small chunk of time light time during the, the, the day so i keep my uh, 14 hour of decent light a day and uh, that's uh, that's how i i will if everything is okay i will prevent these uh, plants to stop uh, to slow down uh, about that, I had a question this morning. Uh, someone asked me about dormancy on Nepenthes. There is no uh, such a thing. Uh, it, they come from tropical climates. They won't have dormancy there. there. It's barely winter. If 
uh, I understood uh, correctly. Basically, you will have five degree, 10 degree maximum less during winter. So it's still very, very decent. Uh, all the, the year it's warm, uh, it's on the tropic. Uh, so clearly no winter there, no need for dormancy. And uh, the, if they looks like they are starting dormancy, it's just a lack of light. So put more light and that should be great. Uh, Viloza. Uh, Viloza on the windowsill. I would love to have that. Uh, it's just, uh, it's expensive. Uh, I know for now, I just uh, managed to have uh, the first picture of um, Amara. So possibly if I manage to have my low AI to picture correctly too, maybe I will try to aim for this Viloza. But uh, for the price, that's uh, you want to be sure you will be able to grow it properly because that's not like uh, I could. OK, it's not working on my windowsill. I would put it downstairs on my basement. No, my basement don't have uh, almost no change of uh, temperature day and night. So that would just kill the plants. So uh, I will try on cheaper plant, even if technically Amara and Loia is not cheap. But uh, yeah, for now, I'm doing just a test. Yes, uh, definitely the, the cold. Uh... How do you know? Actually, I let the, during summer, I will just use the AC to cool down a little bit uh, the, the window seal because uh, it's beside my room. And uh, as I'm on the, the second floor, all the heat of the the house go in my room and it's very hot so i tend to cool down uh during summer when it's very hot uh and uh, during winter i don't have any problem i mean i'm in manitoba uh on the other side of the window it's minus 20 celsius to minus 30. minus 30 celsius is the same as minus 30 in fahrenheit to give you an idea so that's very freaking cold uh, so I I just warmed the the house enough to not drop too cold on the my room and on the windowsill. And keep in mind, uh, if I'm ten centimeter away from the window, that's gonna be cold. All the cold goes from the window and run on the windowsill. But uh, even a meter away of the window, that's warm. It's twenty degree. So uh, it's really just this cold wave that crawl on the the plants so i don't have any problem to cool down during winter that's the opposite if i was to try to have 25 degree on the windowsill during the day in winter almost impossible it would cost me uh, way too much my plants grow during uh, winter uh, i have kind of a mix of island Intermediate. So uh, not everyone will like it, but for example, the uh, uh, I have a spatulata that didn't like really uh, summer. It was too hot, no picture during summer. Not great, but uh, still uh, we have uh, the Jack Linnae. Uh, the Jack didn't like this summer, no picture since, I don't know, four months. Uh, so, uh, but now it's starting again to grow peach, not pitcher, leaves and tendril. So I, I hope I will have uh, some decent pitcher soon, but yes, all the island prefer from fall to spring, but summer is hard on them because again, uh, it's too hot. Uh, it went quite hot uh, during summer. Um, if I have Drosera, yeah, uh, no. I tried, uh, funny thing, I had Drosera, um, the spatulata and the Drosera capensis back on a windowsill in France. It was growing great. Here in Manitoba, no glue. So um, I guess it's too dry. Um, so no, Drosera don't work for me. It's uh, Pinguicula and Cephalodus and uh, the Utricularia. But uh, depending of where you live, I'm sure in um, Quebec, it's supposed to be more humid. 
you will be able to grow them without problem. But uh, here in Maytoba, it's very dry, winter and the summer. Hello, oh, hello, Mexico, nice. Uh, the humidity, 50%. Uh, it's, uh, it will go from 60 to 40, so usually it fluctuates. Uh, and uh, I tend to spray my plant because, again, I have the uh, live sphagnum. Uh, if I don't spray, the live sphagnum will just dry. And uh, I tend also to not water too much the plants, actually. I water, but as I have this top dressing of live sphagnum that is always humid, even if under it's drier, uh, it's uh, the way the plants uh, uh, handle the, this. So I, I don't have any problem for the humidity. Yeah, it's 50% around and it's doing great. I spray morning and evening most of the time. Yep, the Amara, the first picture, this is very, I will show you a picture uh, later on the presentation. I will keep the presentation going. Uh, but yes, first uh, picture and just after the summer uh, heat, when it start to drop, I got uh, the first picture and the second one is coming. So yeah, Amara for now is, uh, I'm expecting that to go uh, better during winter, but we'll see. So the pest problem was a question you asked. Uh, we have Henry that already gave uh, his um, way, is managing this uh, when he had this uh, trips problem. So all not all insects will react the same way. Uh, I did a research, he used neem oil. It's for aphid and trips because uh, that's basically uh, uh, suffocating them. It's not really, uh, it's poisoning them, but not in a, um, um, how to say that? Uh, it won't go inside the plant. It just kill what it touch. That's the only problem. Uh, trips and uh, all this uh, pest can go under the leaves, almost in the substrate. So you will have, whoops, my camera is out. Oh no, it's back. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the, that's a contact killing thing. This other one, he was using this one, dead bug, never used. Spinosad, uh, again, uh, it will kill uh, a lot of uh, insects. We have the trips. That's probably what killed the trips. But uh, if I check that, the Spinosad, that's uh, not really uh, systemic. Me that means that going, oh, I think that that's my green. I have a green screen, guys, so that's why it's uh, bugging everywhere. But uh, yeah, if it continue, I will just probably. Yeah, that's less uh, great, right? Uh, but um, let's keep it this way for now. Uh, so, yes, this uh, systemic, it means the poison go inside the plants, but don't kill the plants. And everything we, that will drink the uh, some, or eat something from the plant will die. Uh, but systemic uh, is uh, not always easy. A lot of uh, chemicals for pests will, will only um, really touch and kill. So uh, I prefer systemic because at least I don't have to hunt and turn each leaves and spray under and um, yeah. But that's a great solution. If you don't, uh, you want to save your plants and you don't have uh, live sphagnum, definitely these two products would work. I I sprayed uh, neem oil on uh, live sphagnum and it was dead. Uh, so depending of what you have, and be, I mean, if I have to choose between letting the pest killing my plants or kill the live sphagnum. I know what I would choose, right? You have to. Sibilensis. Hmm. It's also on my list. Uh, I love the big fat picture, uh, but. Um... Hello from Germany. Oh, nice. So we have people from Europe. Nice to meet you. 
scale for scale yeah scale i never had i'm not good in best i, I almost never got any uh, so i know systemic is absolutely perfect for that um, so again this one uh, systemic that's basically what i said it will poison everything that attack the plant so that's great um, for pest there is i won't even try to spell that e i'm a dalopride that's awful gamma whatever this is the two kind of uh, systemic based pesticide that uh, you can use not all products have them but that's a great uh, when you check that's what you want to search for aphid uh that they are easier uh, versus uh, thrips and scale way easier uh, everything that touch them like all this will uh, oops will uh, um, make it um, uh, disappear uh, neem oil again uh, that's going to be everything that will touch them i think that's drive them nuts and they suffocate so that's the way to go but on this box you see the name aphids when you are searching for another product for tips, the uh, trips, they advertise that in a different way. So my guess is not there is no one single product that will kill everything except uh, systemic pyretrin. Pyretrin, the one on the, the right, uh, a very great product as the one I used back in France. It was not this, this brand, but yeah, that was the thing. The problem is it's toxic for human. Uh, especially for uh, kids, uh, for developing the brain. So that's, there is a lot of rules against this product because uh, that's toxic. If you put that on your backyard, you will kill all the worms around. If it goes on the river, it will kill all the fish. So that's very powerful poison. But if you are on the windowsill, you can manage to use this. And uh, Usually you just water the plants two or three times uh, with that once a week to keep the poison going inside the plants and every vampire insect will just die. So, but I don't know what, where to find this product uh, here in, in uh, North America. Um, so now, okay, what we accomplished so far, guys, I'm super happy about that. Uh, I didn't knew at the beginning of the channel if I would be able to do that to succeed, but uh, clearly we did it. We have a lot of North America. We have people from far away, from Europe and uh, like Canivaro uh, on uh, Australia. I still have a lot to to interview France, uh, the Spain, Italia, I will try um, England, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, maybe I will interview somebody soon. That would be great. Uh, and you guys, if you grow on your windowsill, uh, contact me. You don't have to have a crazy setup with a lot of plants. I mean, if you are successfully growing an Epontes on your windowsill, that's all we want to know. Uh, if uh, you can have a classic strong hybrid, go for it. P people are wanting this information. The usually the way it works is the, they start by uh, the classic species and then they expand and then they 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 buy more plants. So, um... hello, Des. Who are you? Des is uh, from uh, Florida, if I'm right. Uh, ah, yeah, maybe it's not uh, allowed in France too, because that's very toxic. So maybe they, they managed to, to make it disappear, but that was a great product for, for sure. So, um, good morning, Tony. What is the rarest species? Good question.
I don't know. I would go with the Viloza because again, that's so expensive that not a lot of people have it. It's so demanding that not a lot of people grow it. Um, but rare, I don't know. Yep, Florida. So yeah, uh, Florida, by the way, I'm still looking for interviewing people from Europe and the US. And uh, I don't know if I can zoom in. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, boy. Maybe not, guys. <laughs> Let's keep it this way. But yes, uh, we still have a lot of people to interview. Um, I would love to interview more of you guys if you grow your Nepentest on your windowsill wherever you are. Even if you're on a, a spot I already interviewed. I had three person from uh, California. North and uh, Taos, California, but still, we have all the center of the U.S. We have um, the Florida, uh, Louisiana is probably great too. We have a lot of places around, and uh, Europe again, all the the small countries, uh, France, uh, Belgium, Germany, uh, that would be great for an interview. So what we accomplished so far. It was uh, yesterday, no, two days ago. Two days ago, 1,600 subscribers and 8,000, uh, yeah, 80,000 views, sorry. Uh, so um, really cool to be um, part of that, uh, that there is this uh, people that are searching for growing the contest on their windowsill. And I'm, I'm, first, I'm happy to help. and. Uh, I'm happy to make it a thing. Like I was kind of a frustrated when I discovered that all the YouTubers were having gr big greenhouse, uh, terrarium, all the growth chamber. And it was kind of a, yeah, but uh, everyone is uh, thinking that's the only way to go. It was really sad uh, because uh, if you don't want to buy a growth chamber, you won't even try an epon test. Why? It's growing properly. Uh, pick your right species and that's going to be uh, properly growing. Hello, Marco. Uh, welcome. I hope, uh, I don't know what time is it there, but uh, it's probably the end of afternoon in Italy. Um, so yeah, um, Let's try to spread the, the word and to find ways uh, we can make uh, that a thing uh, more known and it's classic uh, to you to grow Nepentes on their windowsill. And if one day I have my neighbor that uh, grow Nepentes, uh, I would be happy. It, it won't. It will no longer be a, a strange plant that uh, nobody knows about. If we can spread the word, uh, even if it's just the classic hybrid. That's going to be great. I, I, I feel like the more people grow it, the better. But uh, Gracilis, Nepotes Gracilis. Yeah. Um, that's definitely a, it sounds like a good species when it's warm. So uh, probably, again, Florida would be uh, great. 5 p.m. in Europe. OK, so end of afternoon. So uh, when I said, uh, get your coffee ready and uh, <laughs> breakfast, yes. So that's the four plants that grow beside my Nepenthes, by the way. Um, the classic windowsill, uh, kind of a tropical, is uh, doing great. Banana, uh, this is growing properly and strong. Uh, very impressed. I got that in spring, so I don't know how it will handle the kind of a colder winter, but still working great. We have the begonia. Uh, I'm really happy about this one. It's kind of uh, growing like a st the stem is really high now. You don't see that. It's kind of too bad. Uh, I would love that to be more rounded, but maybe I will uh, wait a few months until it really um, is established. And then I will cut the vine, if I may, and uh, root it and put it back on the substrate. 
uh, this one, I have no problem for this one. Alocasia poly, uh, that's the African mask. It's very nice plant. Um, it's kind of a hidden behind uh, the next plant, but um, I love it. It's beautiful. It's growing not fast, but I, since summer, I got three leaves. But I mean, they last forever, so that's always uh, good. Yeah, begonia, I would love to have more species. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will uh, choose. Uh... Minnesota. Yeah, a little bit south, but clearly uh, um, not influenced by the, the coast climate. So uh, welcome. So yeah, and the next plant is uh, this one. Uh, that's that was great. It reminds me the all these flowers from um, Hawaii, Tahiti. Uh, so that was very nice. For now, all the flowers are gone, but the plant is growing new ones. So it should be great. The only thing is, uh, I don't know if you see that on this here. You see on the right, it grow fast and lose all the leaves and grow fast higher, etc. So it's basically a bunch of wood at the bottom. So I will definitely try to cut one of the stem and root it and put it back on the ground because uh, for now it's very, very empty at the bottom. So it's like a, a green bowl uh, on the windowsill. But I mean, I have the um, uh, Maxima telegensis that is starting to attach itself above this uh, Wood, so maybe I will keep it. I don't know. If I see how the, 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 the Nepotes will try to grab everything to when they start vining to to go. Um, oh yes, I had this question. Um, so oh, I do a, a acclimate. Uh, it will very depend of the species. For example. Um, I tend to be lazy for for giving plants, or when I know my my condition are are good. Um, so, if it's an island, and uh, I'm in the middle of summer, I will try to acclimate that on my basement for a few weeks because that's colder, and then slightly I will move it to the windowsill, but I won't put it directly in a burning hot sun. Uh, if it's uh, an intermediate. And the conditions are kind of intermediate. That's going to be uh, straight to the windowsill. I get the plants. I know after the shipping, it won't grow properly. So I, I have nothing to lose, basically. It will lose most of the picture. So I just get the plants, repot, and put that on the windowsill and wait. Uh, my best uh, weapon here is uh, patience. That's uh, why I have many plants. Uh, if this one, like the Amara, it took six months, but now it's picturing. So I just give it some uh, good care and wait uh, until it start to be really established. So maybe I will put some uh, photo, but I'm afraid photo have uh, the reputation of growing very fast. So I'm just afraid of them outgrowing my Nepenthes or even this. Anturium, yes, I will try to get some. So the flowers we ask, uh, I had some this question about uh, these flowers. No, I don't uh, had any flower yet here in, in uh, Canada. And the only one I got before was uh, Ventrata in France. So it's not even something you really want to do hybrid with because that's so classic. Uh, and it's already a good hybrid, so why why would you? But uh, I don't know. Uh, for the flowers, no flower. For the seeds, obviously no seeds. But I have two vining plants, at least. I have the Maxima talegensis. I have the Gymnophora. I have the Burkei that is starting slightly to vine. So if I can have a Burkei crossed with... Um, Gymnophora or uh, even the Maxima telegensis, that would be great. So I, I hope I will have flower soon and 
to be able to do a video about the flowers for you to to see what how to recognize a male and a female how to pollinate it uh, how to get these seeds uh, and maybe if the seeds uh, are good i would probably uh, do a, a giveaway i would just keep some and uh, i don't know how to do that but um, i will uh, find ways because i can send seed uh, everywhere where uh, no live plants will uh, exit canada the border is closed you cannot buy or send anything outside canada for live plants but the seed i can so um i will uh, see how i do that later truncata okay truncata uh the experience i have so far uh it's um the plant is probably that size uh it was that size a month ago and now this size is almost the size of the new leaf so i had a crazy leaf jump uh for now i don't know why but it stopped growing properly so uh not properly i mean uh no pitcher the pitcher dried and it posed but it was when uh, we had this spike uh 33 uh fahrenheit uh i got so definitely uh no 33 uh, celsius it's 91 fahrenheit uh, on the windowsill and um, this one uh pose no picture so it was uh, probably stressed but uh, anyway I, it will soon uh, be great let's talk about the seedlings i i had so far so uh sorry stupid thing you probably already know i had this name lvb by blah 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 and i i just connect lately that it was the hybrid i have lowi vici botsiana so i never really bother i because i like the full name but uh, now i understand so that's the the kind of a classic uh supposed to be a good uh, hybrid then norciana maxima so that's what i have maxima could be again lowland to island norciana lowland so i hope this cross will accept the the winter so that's what we got uh, in june so you see on the left part that's the biggest plant and look at now see how they grow crazy good the small one on the right i, I knew they were growing slowly uh, do i fertilize yes I spray once a week with a uh, orchid fertilizer diluted to 200 ppm. So um, once a week I spray and they are doing great, but you see the difference, same seeds, same seed pod, same substrate, same light and growing condition, uh, sown the same day. You see the difference between the two? This is crazy. You clearly have some plants that will grow stronger than other. And the, the one that grows lower will tend to not be uh they will keep growing slowly so uh they would be outgrown by the the big one so clearly uh yeah that's him that definitely uh impressed me a lot and the funny thing is the difference again the seed grown is always interesting this is the three big plants i have so far on the left the kind of a front is green and the lips are red check the right picture another plant the opposite and in the middle everything is kind of a red i can call that red for now but so that's interesting to see how they they will be different i can't wait to have them at least an inch uh, tall just i mean the the picture just to see very much the the difference of everything so clearly the growing from seeds it's always interesting. I tried other seeds, uh, truncata, red and green, and uh, I even bought uh, some nice hybrid uh, on um, Instagram, uh, Maxima, Roku, Molly. I would love to grow that, but uh, no. Uh, I saw them and nothing ever came. So maybe it was too hot during the summer and the, uh, the post guy left the envelope on the on the sun i don't know it could be just bad luck but these three species nothing 
uh, I got other plants from another grower, Fusca and Truncata Red. Yeah, you can tell I, I was looking for Truncata. Same seller, Fusca, I had squat, nothing. But Truncata Red, good. Truncata Red uh, germinates uh, quickly and strongly, and uh, I didn't count how many, but I would say 20 to 30 plants. So that's very cool. And they start to have done the first picture and the new one is about to come. So I won't separate them yet, but I'm already thinking about pushing all the, the pots uh, or the plants I don't want anymore and uh, making space because uh, I will have a full rack of uh, this uh, Truncata and the complex hybrid uh, I shown uh, before and they will, they will be great. Now let's talk about the basil. Remember, I removed three basil on my Gaia. Uh, the two big one was uh, the one uh, I wanted. And then I discovered during this reporting with you that uh, a small, tiny one was uh, attached to the medium one. Uh, it didn't make it. Um, it was not, I was not wanting to remove it, but it was done. So it didn't uh, make it, but the two uh, basil went good. So now it's uh, showing a proper size, proper size picture. So I will sell that uh, in a few months. Um, and again, the bigger the basil, the faster it will recover. So maybe next time I will wait. Speaking about next time, the same plants provided me with a new basil again. So I will remove it later. Not now, but uh, clearly uh, Gaia is uh, definitely giving me uh, some love. So uh, where do I buy the seeds? The seeds, it's uh, the um, private uh, Facebook group, usually. Uh, lately, the Trancara uh, was from, uh, what's his name? Green Monster. Uh, I asked him before if I was allowed to say his name. So it's a green monster, green monsters on uh, Facebook and uh, is the one that uh, sell uh, the, the good seeds for me. There is other people. I'm not saying that, uh, but uh, this is uh, my way to go lately. And uh, he is about to have uh, other um, uh, seeds available soon that uh, interest me and uh, I will definitely uh, uh, buy more very soon and use the fast, I will pay for the fast shipping FedEx. Uh, the faster you get the seeds, the less damage they can be and the more success you will have. So uh, I don't want to have uh, 25 days shipping and uh, having the plants dead. But I think about Nepate seeds. Sphagnumbus, you mean live Sphagnumbus? I, I, I saw my seed uh, on Sphagnumbus, dead Sphagnumbus. Uh, fertilizer, it really depends on the brand that you will buy, but uh, you can take your dry Sphagnumbus and boil it with water, a lot of water, uh, it will sterilize everything. But um, yeah, I would never sow seeds on live sphagnum. Live sphagnum grows so fast. It will outgrow everything. That's beautiful. I love sphagnum, but clearly that's hard. And, and yeah, let's show you something more. You see on the Fusca, you have some sphagnum that is growing back. I did a test. I let this sphagnum, it was my uh, live sphagnum. I was uh, lacking sphagnum moss because it was hard to find and it's so expensive. So I just dried my own sphagnum moss, let it dry for two months. It was totally crispy and dry. I was able to just spread it like salt, but give it humidity, it come back. So that's where the, the dried sphagnum moss sometime will come back because 
if it was not sterilized and cooked, uh, then processed and shipped, it will still have some potential seeds on it, I guess. And that's a uh, comeback. That's very impressive. Okay. Um, Island Red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Viking is great too. Oh, sorry. I hope you don't hear my stomach. <laughs> I'm starving now. Um, what was the first Depot test? Von Trotta. Classic. But again, it was forgiving. So, uh, yeah, the study about the germination. It's like this. Uh, some people use the um, G. A5, something like that. It's supposed to help the germination, uh, but um, I never did. So anyway, oh, the, the last basil that we got was uh, from the Ventrata again, uh, and it's growing very well. I'm so impressed of the speed of these two basil. Uh, faster actually than, than Gaia. Uh, so for now, they are not removed, but uh, I will uh, definitely, um, I will definitely uh, remove them later or maybe do a test. I don't know. Local place, Lies Fagnum? No, I don't know. Uh, other growers, uh, Hunt on the KDG eBay, but uh, no, a life fandom, except if you have like a, a carnivorous plant society on your uh, state or province or town, that's going to be hard. Um, and you don't want really to collect that in the wild, that would be not great for nature. So, uh, not basil, but um, this time it's the kind of a I don't know how to say that. Activated nod on the Talagensis, Maxima Talagensis. Uh, in a few months, it grew great. The only thing is, uh, since these two guys came, the, the, the last picture was smaller and uh, there is more time between pictures. Before it was crazy big. I have one that is the size of this cap. But... Uh, the these two new vine are definitely sucking some energy of the plant so uh that's going to be great later okay whoops oh what did i do look at the good uh background um we have on the mac because i'm on mac let's go back oh it crashed actually Okay, good enough. So, um, as what we discussed before, and we will end up soon this uh, live, I mean, because uh, it's been already, uh, hold on, oh, an hour. Okay, I will rush it. I try to not have a live for too long. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so uh, that's the, the, the closing uh, I was uh, doing. Uh, that's the Amara, first picture of Amara on Windows here. Just after the summer, when it cooled down, that's, uh, that was this very morning. So it's barely open yet. It's really narrow. It's uh, it really remind me the um, Tentaculada. And um, so <laughs> thank you for that, but we cannot stay all day we all have uh, stuff to do um so yeah amada is enjoying the window seal for now i'm sure it will un uh, grow properly during winter because of the grow lights i have the the one oops because of the sunset light yes uh i i love them uh, I use them uh, just to have more time of light. 
So it was like uh, the, the first month, it was uh, half an hour on the morning, half an hour on the evening. Then I moved that to one hour to one hour and a half. So I'm just trying to have uh, the same uh, time of light all year round. So summer to middle of winter. So, uh, but I, they were great. And again, the, the Amara enjoy it too. So I'm uh, very happy. I can't wait to see uh, if it will under next summer when it will be warm again. Um, thank you for that. <laughs> I'm trying to not take myself too seriously or be like the, the, the cold teacher. Like I prefer discussion always around coffee or beer, but uh, virtual is good enough for now. Um, so Amata and the dream, yeah, definitely uh, try it. It's not for now it's working great uh, i just learned everything from ron the interview i did uh, he, he was uh, giving a lot of advice and uh, it's uh, it's good so try it definitely um acclimate the humidity as i spray them uh, morning and evening usually uh, and i have the humidifier that i can run also if it's very dry during the night, I will spray on the evening and run the humidifier. And that's how I manage the, um, them to be acclimated. The, I, I did sometimes with the Ziploc opening and etc. cetera, but um, one time it, it was not properly open. The sun hit it, it cooked the plants. And now I'm, I'm burnt. Uh, I prefer that to take two months more to recover, but at least uh, recovering from death is harder, I believe. So uh, no, I just put the pots, uh, spray them, show, give him some love and um, wait, patience. And finally, ah, good question. Algae out of sphagnum, the aeration. If uh, there is not enough ventilation, not the airflow, or it's really in a tight, closed box, it will grow uh, algae. If it's uh, in a big box and you have holes for having the air moving around, uh, usually you don't have any algae. I never got so. And the final one, uh, I was, uh, I would like to, Ask you something. You already know my uh, my small logo that was done quickly, and now I'm considering moving to something else. Like uh, so, I like the old phones stuff. That's uh, maybe I'm old, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Hold on. Oops, I bugged again. So, do you hear me? I hope so. So that's the, okay. Yeah, sorry, it took longer. Uh, I, will, I will try to keep it under an hour next time for, for sure. 45 minutes would be great. Um, but that was the first run and uh, maybe I'm rusty. So I will see. Thank you. Anna. So yeah, a uh, new logo. I don't know what you think about. Uh, I hope it's uh, it's gonna work great. So that was the last project I had so far. So um, expect that to be everywhere. And um, yeah, that's it. So um, that's it for the this uh, presentation. Maybe I will uh, try again one last time. Boom! Hey, on with the seal. <laughs> so uh, first. Yeah, I would definitely um, um, maybe color it. Uh, I don't know. I will see how um, the example I got was. I don't know if I will use color here. So that's my example. So I don't know if I will really color it if I have. Uh, a look like that, like a dark background and white, I would uh, 
maybe keep it this way. But depending of the, the background, yes, I will definitely uh, giving maybe one color. I don't know. So uh, thanks, guys, uh, to um, everyone and for joining from uh, uh, everywhere, from uh, Europe to North America, so that's uh, and even Australia. Uh, so that was great. Um, again, I plan to do that maybe, maybe not in a month, but before Christmas. Let's say before Christmas. Uh, I will again post uh, uh, on Facebook and YouTube asking you if you have any question and just do the follow up of the evolution of the seedling basil and the window seed, new species, new, new things. So that's going to be uh, what I will uh, do. So um, I will um, let you do your uh, your thing for the rest of the day. And uh, again, thanks a lot. Uh, I was afraid to be lonely this morning. <laughs> I was really, I was like, what can I do if there is nobody? Like I would speak alone and alive and that's going to be awful. But that didn't happen. Uh, so thanks a lot and uh, have a great day and happy growing. Bye-bye.